All right. I do believe we are live. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Break the Rules stream. I am your host, Lev Polyakov at LevPo on Twitter. It is a great pleasure to be here today to talk about, I would say, not just uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, although that is kind of the theme. I would say video game and music culture in general and uniting all these uh, different people together over something that I think a lot of people are currently in, but then digging deeper to see what exactly is going on behind this, not just this blue rodent or the red akenda and all that stuff, but also behind our motivations for why we played these things and also what is the end goal? What are we after? I want to get real deep and philosophical as we keep going to the stream. We may have some surprise guests coming in as well. I want to ask everybody, all the people who are watching this who have no idea what BTR does, just like what Triple Q does to music, BTR does with people, where we bring in people who would otherwise never have a chance to meet if we're talking about Marlon. Well, I don't know. Actually, Marlon, you may have met the Black Eyed Peas, so I, I may not uh, be speaking correctly here, but uh, Triple Q did a remix of your song with uh, the Black Eyed Peas. But anyway, the point is that we bring different people together who otherwise may never have had a chance to speak and this is something that I'm very proud of Break the Rules doing and we're going to be keep we're going to keep doing this today so before that I just want to say thank you so much Marlon Triple Q from coming in and I would love to find out uh, what motivates you to create the kind of work that you do Marlon mm -hmm. what motivates you to well what motivated you to uh, link up with Sonic Team early on like back in uh, the uh, Nights in the Dreams era when you had that uh <laughs> theme song at the end with that little angel oh, guy and candle. Yeah, I remember everything. I remember the whole thing. Wow. Yes. So, and uh, same with Triple Q. What motivated you to start making these amazing remixes of popular media together with uh, anime, video game, music? So let's start mm -hmm. with Marlon. Let's uh, head from there. And also tell us a little bit about yourself. I know you're a professor right now at NYU. Before that, you were at Bard College. You're a singer-songwriter. So go for that. And everybody subscribe. Subscribe right now. Keep subscribing and like the video. Well, thank right. you for that intro. And Triple Q, a pleasure to be here. Pleasure to be here with you too, mate. Lev is a pleasure. Sure, for sure. Um, yeah, you know, I kind of have had my hand in, in the music industry since the 90s. Um, and I, you know, started out as a session singer. So I, in the session singer back in the 90s, early, you know, 2000s was very much you came into New York or LA or Chicago and you basically sang on whatever you got you know, the agent or your manager called you in for, whether that would be a voiceover, a, jing, a, a TV commercial, a record, or a tour. So, you know, that's what I kind of did. And I, I fell into an industry at the time that I was able to just work with a, an incredible, you know, artist and incredible people in front of the scene and behind of the scene. So um, I was on the road a lot. And, um, and then I, when I'd come off the road, I'd just be in and out of buildings singing on different different projects. And I got a call one day to come in to sing for the Sega game. And you know, to create help to create the character and help to find it and arrange it. And um, you know, I kind of went into it just thinking this is the job. This is what it's gonna be. And then they called me back to re-sing and they called me back to revamp it, re-edit it. But you know, you kind of go into these type of projects thinking, you know, it's the gig. But at the time, you know, All right. you don't really understand or see the power that you're going to have over those people who are playing the games and how much the song is connected to to, you know, their lives. And so you don't see that until years later when you see people finding you and telling you how much that you've touched them or this song is meant what this song is meant to them. It's really amazing to me, you know, how that. Um, it's know, like an investment. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're creating. Yeah. You're in the process of creating, and you're creating because you're excited to get the call for the job. But you, you know, you're excited to get the coin that you're making. But it's deeper than that. But at the time, you all you're thinking about is just trying to do the best job that you can, you know, with the song. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Getting that dollar, getting that coin. You're thinking like, hey, it's about the coin. I got to make sure that I'm doing what the producer needs me to do. <laughs> and you're thinking, you know, you leave it thinking I did the best job I can, and that's the job. Yeah, I mean, you never know when it, if like it could be just like a gig to somebody, but like you never know when if that gig is going to hit it big time or not. Exactly. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. That's the cue. And the thing about it is, the other thing that you don't realize, you can't realize this until later, is that 
a lot of times the things that you're creating, whether it be a video game or, you know, if it be like, you know, some of the songs I did, like with, you know, with Billy Joel, I hear River of Dreams and I see people respond to that song. It's still to this day or All About Soul or something else I've done. And you realize that you're helping to create the soundtrack to people's lives. You know, you're, you're literally, music is, is, is creating spaces where people are feeling emotional about something or, or it's the first time that they're getting a specific thing, you know, or this music happened in my life when I need, you know, I was going through this rough time or my parents were doing this. I've heard that this music, I would put this on, I put the game on and this song would change it. And my reaction when I would, when I read these things or someone will reach out to me, is like, really? Wow. Like that's, that's amazing. So you really, like you said, Triple Q, you don't know when you're in the process of, of creating, you're just creating. You don't have all of yeah. these thoughts until after it's done. <laughs> it is it is kind of funny to imagine though. Like like I don't I don't mean to like like shit on your work or anything, but because I'm a huge fan. It's like the Knuckles theme, like a lot of people like some people think it's a little like silly, even though yeah, you did a bang up job on that song. Mm. It's like Absolutely. Just to imagine a song like that getting them through a hard time. Well, I guess it's like, oh, laughter is the best medicine. Well, it's a, it's a very earnest, it's a very earnest yeah. song. But I also think that society's become a little bit too jaded today, where yeah. we're on so many levels of irony that anything that talks about, for example, Knuckles speaks about the uh, blood of his ancestors. And something like right. that, I think, is something that people have lost total touch of because we oh, feel absolutely. like we're such an atomized society that there's no connection to anything that happened before and something that actually does have an incredibly deep meaning something that a lot of people i think now are starting to talk about is just sort of like ridiculed <laughs> and taken back as oh this is just like this hokey thing and uh i know Marvin, yeah, yeah. like where did those lyrics stem from uh you know about uh, protecting the flower uh blood of my ancestors how did all that come together yeah i really don't know it's like when i got to the session they were there and so I just, you know, had to sing what was there. And, I, you know, and I think that the thing that's, you know, I agree, I agree with Triple Q. There are, there are many things when we go through history and we see music and it is very easy to, to, to um, you know, for especially in the world we live in today, everybody's a critic and everybody's opinion now is and has to be valid and has to be heard. It's just the world and where we are today. We respect that. Um, but... You know, I think if you're a, if you're a kid and you're trying to make sense of who you are and you're trying to dream and you're trying to find fantasy and you're trying to find places that bring you to a place in your mind and in your heart where you can escape to. I don't think there's a child on the planet that doesn't need that at some point in their lives. And I feel that if Knuckles was able to do that, even if it's the last line, you know, I'll fight for my destiny. Who can't relate to that? Who doesn't have a dream? Who's not willing to fight for that? I can't believe that there's anybody in the in the planet who doesn't have some space of wanting to fight for Well, I, this is something I want to get to later on because you bring, bring up a very good point. But uh, Triple Q, as far as you go, you're more of a millennial. You, you've just turned 30 years old, I believe. Is that right? That's right. That's right. Yeah. Happy, oh, happy birthday. There we go. Yeah. So <laughs> you are of the uh, millennial generation, and you've experienced probably similar things that I have grown up uh, with the same influences. <clears throat> what got you to create these amazing remixes? And as somebody who has never, I wouldn't say I'm not mus musically oriented just because I've never tried. But as somebody who's never experienced that, when I look at how you're able to connect all these different songs together and make them just seem seamless as if they were meant to be this, this way, mm. how does that come from? Where does that, where is that, like you would probably be like Marlon's uh, top student in the NYU if you were to go there right now. So like, oh, I wish, where, I wish how, I could how go to fucking Berkeley. I wish. <laughs> uh, well, now, not, not, Ber is it Berkeley right now? No, it's, uh, it's Tish right now, right? Yeah, Tish and the new school right now. There we go. Oh, you. Oh, so you're in a different school. Yeah, I see. Yeah, in in New York, baby. <laughs> oh. All right. So Triple Q, uh, l let us know where where your mastery lies. How you were able to do the kind of things you do. Uh well, it's oh yeah. I never really had any formal music education, like like in high school in. Australia, like music is like a freaking 
it's like an obligatory subject like math or or sports or whatever so that's just a thing that i did it's not it's not really that important i guess what was in i guess what really got me into it is like i th- i think i've started maybe over 10 12 14 years ago I just was in a class one day, like in, on a computer. It's like, oh, here's how you use Audacity. Mm-hmm. And I'll, for those who don't know, like Audacity is like a free program where you can manipulate audio. And then I just dumped a couple of audio files in there, just started screwing around. And it just came from there, really. I just learned how to manipulate audio that way, eventually moved on to programs like Vegas. FL Studio, and yeah, like I said, I never really had a uh, formal uh, music education as a kid, but just from, I just had to manually learn it from ear. But That's it's wonderful. like <laughs> That's wonderful. Yeah. Well, did you also uh, have a lot of inspiration from the anime uh, that you watched? Like, why specifically did you? I mean. I guess one thing that I could say is that it's cr- incredibly popular. This is something that people can easily find. They can easily associate, you know, certain feelings that they have for anime and video games. Uh, so would would that be the reason, or why exactly did you go for anime and video games? I guess, well, I, I guess the easiest answer to that would be, oh, that's just that's just my interest, like, if you're interested in something, you want to make something cool out of it. And but why? It's but, just. Yeah. I, I mean, I guess it's kind of a hokey question because of why are yeah. you interested yeah. in A or B? But I, if we were to kind of dive deeper into it, why do you think you and so many other people like this uh, this kind of anime video? See, I sound like such a boomer when I'm even saying it. It's hard <laughs> because I'm in the same boat as you are, wherein I like a lot of the stuff, but then I started digging and started fir- figuring certain things out, at least like with Sonic, for example. I had this video yeah. that I did for Max Derrick called The Esoteric Secrets of Sonic the Hedgehog, where no name in the chat right now says, Lev, are you going to explain the connection between Zoroastrianism and Sonic to them? <laughs> so I did this whole video where I broke down how Sonic the Hedgehog symbolism, you have like the wings spread out coming from the ring, that that is a Zoroastrian symbol called the Farvahar, which is also found in Babylonian, ancient Egyptian, all kinds of different uh, societies and religions have this as being a sacred symbol, which I think the likeliest uh, meaning of is uh, to achieve enlightenment, where you would have, let's say, the tree of life that's watered by these two birdmen who have the uh, cones, and uh, this tree on top of it has this uh, ring with the wings spread out. And it's very similar to, you could say, like in uh, Kundalini, like in yoga, when you do mm. various breathing techniques, right, the right, goal right. is to t- transmute the sexual energy from your root chakra up into your crown chakra. And mm. this imagery, I think, is found in Sonic the Hedgehog and other video games as well. I don't think it's a deliberate effort by Sega to have these things in there. What I think is that it's subconscious, that we subconsciously refer back to the same imagery, whether it's rings and the star points and... Uh, you could even see like the columns, for example, with the checkerboard pattern. That's something that's in Freemasonry, where you have the checkerboard plat- uh, pattern on the Masonic floor, and then you also have these two columns of severity and mercy. And there's similar things going on with Sonic the Hedgehog when it comes to, for example, that goalpost. I have like a whole gallery, like whole images of this wow. stuff. I'm gonna link to it later. <laughs> he went in. <laughs> yes. When no. I was a kid, when I fucking played it, I just thought, oh. Ooh. It looks colorful. Oh, it's just I didn't really think there was any fucking deep meaning to it. <laughs> but I think it's the same thing. It's the same thing with anime, honestly. I really think that when it comes to watching anime, you're seeing like, you know, these uh, girls with these uh, big eyes and big other things. But at the same time, what you also are getting out of anime, I think, is number one, you're getting a certain dose of personal responsibility where i think a big difference uh, and triple q you can disagree marlon disagree if you want what i'm seeing though in anime is apart from a lot of today's western cartoons is anime has this focus on self 
determination on self-reliance on getting something out of the mm. experience of being alive as opposed to being a victim and i think that there is something in that that's very empowering and today's culture i think is the opposite of it at least in the west and i think it harkens back to certain traditional values like if you look at japanese society they still at least in the way that it's portrayed in the animes there is th this value on hierarchy there's this value on family structure all that stuff it's mm. not like I think in the West where a lot of this stuff is just like we were talking about the lyrics about the ancestors. It's not just something that's seen as this ironic thing. It's actually something that people take quite seriously. Mm -hmm. And I think that yeah, in yeah, watching yeah. anime, people kind of start to resonate with that part of it. But I don't know. That's just that's just my spiel. What do you guys think? I it's love worth... the fact that you made it that deep. I love that you <laughs> actually took that time and went in and, and saw layers to things. Because the truth is, there's nothing that is... Is just one layer. There's not. There's yeah. no art. There's no music. There's nothing that is yeah. not that's not encoded. It always is. Definitely. That's well, I, kind of, <laughs> I kind of. I kind of wish it was just that simple. If only for the sake of simple. my education. It's like yeah. oh, oh, the curtains are blue. Oh, the <laughs> curtains are blue because they fucking symbolize depression. No, they were just blue because they were blue. Just don't make my life harder for me. Fucking please. I'm sorry, Triple Q. It's never that simple, bro. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I agree, though. It's like you can you can agree. You can just extract anything. Like mm -hmm. even Knuckles himself. Like a lot of people think he's like, like say he's like black coated. And I, I can see it. Yeah. Well, when you're talking about, uh, let's say, for example, Marlon, if we were to hearken back to like traditional African society, something yeah. that I think is very interesting, what the uh, theosophist, well, former theosophist, then he started his own thing, Rudolf Steiner said, who was the founder of the Waldorf schools, he was actually complaining, you'd really disagree with him probably, but he was complaining about things like jazz. Because he says that originally a lot of these beats were used in a ceremonial religious setting. And when you take it out of the ceremonial setting, you never know where that energy goes. So this was like somebody who believed in this energy, believed in sp uh, spiritualism, believed that there were other things outside of us. So right. where that energy goes, I think you could even see it in so many of uh, today's hip hop. There's a lot of... You know, there seems to be a lot of negative. I mean, there's always been a lot of negativity, at least if we're talking about like the gangster rap culture. Uh, right. There's been this sense of dread and despair. If you listen, for example, to any last words by uh, Easy E, you know, mm -hmm. that's a really haunting, you know, that's a very demonic song, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So if we have this demonic energy, for lack of a better word, and then compare it to a lot of this idea of music having a certain sacredness to it where do you guys fall in on that whole thing like do you guys see music as just being something to entertain or what what do you make of it what do you make of the power of music triple q you want to go first the power of music and uh oh god i, I kind of forgot the question <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah i know i was listening it's like <laughs> Marlon, you know, do you want to go first? I'm like, what? Sure, I'll go. I mean, I think, you know, when you think about music and and and, and community and how music is is shared and and used in the community and for the purpose of gathering and the purpose of healing and the purpose of worship and all of those different things, there's a different there's a purpose there. When you get to something to the point where we're selling music and we're using music for a variety of things, then the energy is has no choice but to change, does it not? Because it's not coming from the same place. The heart is moving and pulsing in a completely different way. And so we have to be aware of that fact and understand that fact. You know, in terms of if something is used in a ceremony and you go to jazz, then it doesn't necessarily, in my opinion, feel that the descendants of slaves who have come to the to the, the, the Americas, they had to take what was given and what was left of them and make use of it based upon what they had been told, first generation, second generation, third generation. Of course, if you know anything about the rhythm of that music that was carried, much was also hidden in the rhythms. There was, there was un, unspoken things that had to be shared and they could only be shared in the rhythms because there was no other way. When the drums were taken away, then you had no other way to move those rhythms through than what we would call now melismas or runs or riffs, or you know, oh. they were taken through in those in, in in how one would say a riff or how one would use a mode. So 
while certain things were broken, there were many things that were also kept, but they were just hidden and encoded, which was what you were speaking about before. There are layers to this shit, as they say. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Back, uh, back yeah, to the yeah. layers. There are so many layers. And so when you get to the point of where we are in music now, we have to also think about the fact that music now is is melodyned and tweaked and tuned and auto-tuned and redone. so a lot of what's making the music is no longer the pulse of a human by the time you finish it it's been through process and and, and moved through so many things that the human element is a fraction of what is happening in the music so mm -hmm. you're talking about reverberations and energies coming in that may not necessarily be human at all so now if we're talking about, for example, uh, Jack Scully made a comment in the chat saying mashups must be some kind of curse. So <laughs> when I think of Triple oh, Q now, I'm thinking of what China may be doing right now with these uh, hybrid uh, creatures where they're taking human DNA and combining it with pig DNA and creating yes. like these pig people that never see the light of day. You know, <laughs> they don't want the cameras to look at these pig uh, pig men. So they're yeah. kept somewhere in a cage. <laughs> So I don't and all know. They're listening to are mashups of these second games. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, no. In all seriousness, though, trip, triple Q. Oh, wait, where's that sound coming from? By the way, there's somebody speaking. I don't know if it's uh. Yeah, a, I hear it too. yeah it, triple Q. Is it in your room? Uh oh, oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just hold on a second. All right, no problem. Everybody, subscribe right now while Triple Q is uh, you know kick, kicking some ass behind there. He's just gonna beat everybody <laughs> into. I don't know if that's much, that much better, but well, that's a bit awkward. <laughs> you're a very you're yeah. a very quick fighter. Hopefully, whoever was there learned their lesson and they're. <laughs> Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, yes. But anyway, no, in all seriousness, Triple Q, I'm a huge admirer of your music, and I think that there is a lot of creativity when it comes to mashing up these these things together into this hybrid. But uh, I don't know, like, do you think that there is some, for you personally, some spiritual state that you get into when you listen to it, or if you can extract what exactly you get out of uh, making your music, other than just, hey, I like anime, and I like video games, and I like Black Eyed Peas, so I'm going to mash them together. Like, what exactly has been the zeitgeist, you know, if I want to use a very... A, a very exquisite, you know, term to make myself look smarter than I actually am. So, Ugh. if you're, what is the zeitgeist that you feel when you have this energy of people all around you with the anime avatars who listen yeah. to what you do, who have this certain kind of culture? Do you feel like you've ceased to become just triple Q? And oh, Triple Q was in the person who you know originally was Triple Q, but you've also kind of be they've also become a part of you, like you've become kind of like this hive mind where you have to or you're expected to be a certain way to go with the hive mind, or do you try to stay independent like Knuckles? What, what do you what do you think? Oh, gosh, like okay, like <laughs> bit of a joke answer, but like. <laughs> Oh, I make mashups because it's it's one song combined with another song. So if I combine them together, then that means it only takes half the time to listen to both of those songs. <laughs> it saves me time. No, I no. feel you. <laughs> <laughs> I wish, but yeah. No, that's a good answer. I guess it's like, I Go guess on. it is kind of a zeitgeist, as it were. Like, I always try to take like what's popular at the time, and then try to combine it with something else that might be less popular like mm. within the mainstreams like oh you have the freaking black eyed peas or whatever they were popular at the time oh what if they were what if they were combined with some really uh, esoteric like anime from the fucking 50s or whatever so it's mm. so it's like almost like kind of bringing those audiences together like say nerd culture and mm. and mainstream culture together like a lot of a lot of my stuff is a lot of my stuff is like that like even today i just take i'm so out of touch though i don't listen to modern music i just take a look i just take a look the the billboard charts or whatever and go oh this sounds popular or oh, oh i heard this on the radio i'm gonna combine it with something else and if it happens to sound good then hey that's a bonus sometimes i get ideas Sometimes I get really good ideas, though. It's like, oh, this might sound really good with this. And it's like, but yeah, 
it 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 really is just a cultural zeitgeist of of media from all walks of life basically mm. And that's the media that you consume. But do you also see yeah. there being a cultural zeitgeist within the hive mind of the anime community? For example, I'll give you an example. I was in your Discord, and I noticed that there was a particular vibe to how people were speaking, like they seemed to have their own their own language, even though they were speaking English. There were certain references that all of them had, and it may not have been something that I saw as being you know, that relevant to whatever it is that I'm thinking about. But to them, it was something that they probably held to be very important. Like, do you see there being something specifically within Zoomer culture, even more than millennial, where people are kind of isolating into these bubbles, into these pockets, where they they become kind of like this organic hive mind? Would you say something like that is happening? I probably, it's like, it's it's kind of a tall thought to think oh maybe i'm shaping the culture it's just mm. that, well, or, that, or that, is the that, culture that, shaping that you and then you yeah, are yeah, shaping that, that's good, could it be shaping me like right <clears throat> because it's like it's culture that other people have made and i'm reappropriating that but that's become a part of my identity you know well, for example, take something like uh, like the Japanese culture of like the pretty anime girl, for instance. There is this video that you did, I don't know if you saw it, Marlon, where it turns out that Knuckles is the fursona of this Japanese girl named Maki, who has red hair, and she exhibits all of Knuckles' uh, personality traits, so that's why Triple Q made this music video with her, and it starts... That is and it starts out with like there's a photo of Knuckles, you know, playing the piano, and she's playing the piano right next really, to him. Yeah, I love this. Yes, and then there's like a whole there's like a picture of her in the uh, very loose bikini uh, that a uh, triple Q <laughs> <laughs> drew oh, right, right, right yeah. in the center there. So that is that is one example of what I think is going on. Where I think that there is a lot of thirst today, not just for sex but for love. I think people are missing out on having the kind of love that may have been a lot more common back in the day where there were, let's say, more stable, uh, more stable families. Now, I'm not saying that everything was perfect back in the day. I don't want to put on rose-colored glasses. But I think that people are so isolated today that they do look at like these pretty anime girls as mm. their muses, as this... Yeah, well, hard. even the word idol. You know, like they look at them as these idol things that they may never be able to get to, yet they're still always there. They're like this embodiment of this perfection, you know, like this girl that would never let them down, that's always, you know, like the waifu that's always there for them. <laughs> but at the same time, my biggest concern, this is kind of like, this is why I want to do this stream, by the way. This whole <laughs> stream was an excuse to get to the root of what I see is going on here, where <laughs> I think that there is this, there is a sense of loneliness dread not enough self-assurance within a lot of people especially a lot of young men where they superimpose whatever they may achieve to these anime girls and i know like triple q like what do you think of that whole thing as well as marlon i don't know if the students at nyu have a similar situation going on i mean millennials in general are having a lot less sex than the previous generation and probably so so is gen z and i'm not saying that sex is the answer to all our problems but even the fact that people don't go out there and reach out to other people and just are kind of like stuck that is that's gonna bite us in the ass i don't know well all i know is i'm on triple q's youtube page and i'm like in like <laughs> i love it what <laughs> there I, we go. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just I'm there. Like, like, wow, this is amazing. Oh gosh, it's like I. I, I but it's exactly what you was what you were speaking of, though, bro. It's this. You're you're really creating, and you're adding a bunch of different elements and different styles and 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 even eras together, which I think, yeah, yeah. which speaks about what you said. It's like, eh, am I shaping the culture? Which I kind of completely agree with. It's like. When you're creating, I don't think anyone sits down to go, I think I'm going to shape the culture. I just think you just are reacting to what's happening around you. And then, yeah, what, yeah, yeah. You know, then whatever comes, comes. And then somebody else comes behind that and says, you know, Triple Q, really? He was really looking at that. And you're like, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Oh, I was just in my room and I just saw this. But that's the way, you know, things get created. You create. Absolutely. And then somebody comes behind you and they try to make sense of what it is that you've done. 
sometimes they, a lot they of might the... they might even create something of their own it's like exactly a, a, a lot of cultures reaction to something and yeah. that that makes mm. another reaction and another reaction and it goes on absolutely, yeah, absolutely. yes yeah. and sometimes a lot of the best artists they're not even aware of what it is that they're doing like exactly. the idea of the muses the muses are responsible for the art not me i'm just this this thing this receptor and this is like right. something that people like Nikola Tesla believed as well, where the brain is more of a receptor for communication with the divine as opposed to it mm. coming out of the brain. Like if you were to take a radio and smash the radio, you wouldn't stop the actual signal. The signal would just go to another radio. It's not exactly. the radio that's making the signal. But uh, if, if I were to look at the lyrics over here, I mean, you know, the uh, you can call me Knuckles on Lysonic. I don't chuckle. I'd ra Okay, did they did – they, you said that this was Sega. This was not your doing. This right. was something that right. was there in the beginning. And it probably, and you know, to be honest, they probably hired someone to come in and, you know, look at every, whatever the ideas they had. I'm quite sure they probably were throwing around ideas and, and different people working on it until they could figure out, like, this works with what we want to do. Mm. Right, right. So, so there's like a there's like a middleman who's like writing all the English lyrics or whatever? Exactly. Yeah. Mm. Okay, okay. That makes sense. Right. Who probably never played Sonic Three, or else he wouldn't include the uh, line about chuckling. Since... Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a bit of a discrepancy. Mm. But... So over right. here, so over here, we go with your verse, Marlon. Born on an island in the heavens, the blood of my ancestors flows inside me. My duty is to save the flower from evil deterioration. So in this sense, I imagine Maki or any insert anime girl here or insert whoever here. This is the flower. And the deterioration, I think, is just, uh, you know, it's that old hero's journey thing of wanting to save the princess from the dragon or whatever. Right, Even right. though here it's the, the emerald, it's still, I think, the same sense of having a certain goal to uh, meet. Yeah. And, and in this sense, I think Knuckles is a very traditional guy. Absolutely. Yeah. I agree. He, he was written like that. He's like, he's, he's, he has a whole bunch of cultures, like, ingrained in him, like, if you've ever seen or played Sonic Adventure, he's Mayan, and mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. the OVA, he's Australian, and uh, and if you've ever known about like the meme, he's like Ugandan, mm -hmm. <laughs> Ugandan <laughs> knuckles, yes, <laughs> yeah, he, he's a he's a melting cultural pot, and that's what I really that's what I really like about him, and I really appreciate that they brought someone on like yourself, like Marlon Saunders, to be able to contribute to that. That's that, and I appreciate that a lot. Mm. he's one of my favorite characters and i love that yes but there is this other thing with sonic and this is another thing that i touched on in that uh video that i did about the esoteric secrets where dr eggman's ro roboticization of these little animals in a way i kind of see that playing out today where like what mm. does robotnik do robotnik takes these little animals he puts them into these robot shells and then it's up to sonic to free the robots for uh, to free the creatures inside of the robots it's almost kind of like Plato's Cave. If you're familiar, uh, Marlon, you're, you're familiar with Plato's Cave. Triple Q, are yep. you familiar with Plato's Cave? Ah, I've only been to like one cave in my life. <laughs> I've never, never visited Plato's Cave. Ah, <laughs> uh, if this was the uh, if this was the '80s, you should have visited uh, Plato's Retreat. I heard that was pretty good too. <laughs> I'll keep it in mind. I'll keep it in mind. Yeah, look up Plato's Retreat after we're done here. I think you're gonna get a lot out of that. But anyway. I think that what's hap I think that what's happening over here is over socialization where I think a lot of children are trained to think and act as society demands so kids feel ashamed of behavior or speech that is contrary mm. to society's expectations and I think that that brings on feelings of powerlessness depression defeatism guilt self-hatred you know, like we are in a way living in this uh, roboticized box and in Plato's cave the allegory was that, the people were in a cave, and they were not seeing reality. They were seeing the shadows on the wall illuminated by the fire behind them. So they would just see, like, these puppets, the shadow puppets, and they would think that these puppets, that's all there is to life. And when it comes to being in this, not just, uh, you know, not just video games, because I think you can get a lot out of video games, but in general, being in this very online state, it's like a closed circle. It's like a closed loop where you're just constantly 
getting information from the people that are around there. And I think that there is a difference between, let's say, kind of like the Newgrounds generation, the Triple Q and I grew up with, and what people are exposed to right now, like the Zoomer generation. Because with the Wild West of the Internet, and I even recall on your Discord server, one of the rules stated, you know, about like what you aren't allowed to say and do because like this, you know, we're not in the Wild West of the Internet anymore. So, oh, yeah. yeah, so when it comes to that quality, that Wild West quality, I think that, you know, despite any hurt feelings that people may have had, I think it brought people into these communities who wanted to be in those communities, regardless of any pressure. In a way, I think pressure kind of makes you grow. If there's no pressure, if anybody, if everybody just tells you all the time that you're perfect, just the way you are, you have nothing to work on, you're not going to grow. It doesn't mean that you have to, you know, castigate people, but having a good balance here of like giving people a goal to reach towards, I think is very important. And now I think what ended up happening, just my personal opinion, I think that with the internet in general, we've had less gatekeeping and more people who are quote unquote normies going online, you know, and telling people what they are or aren't allowed to think. And these are people who have nothing to do with internet culture at all. You know, these are usually moral busybodies that love shaming people for saying the wrong things. And my concern is I think a loud minority of people is creating this, you know, this feeling that people you know, that, that people are ashamed, that people are scared to uh, express whatever they may be thinking. And it's creating, I think, a lot of division today. So I know that's that's just my spiel about that. And uh, Marlon, Triple Q, let me know what you guys think. <laughs> um, I think you kind of laid it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, laid, you you definitely laid it out. That's what that's. Uh, I'll leave it at that. I don't really have a lot to like say about modern culture. I mean, I I guess it's definitely changed, but I mean, if it's changed, then you got to really go along with it. Really, that's that's why. You know, why do, do you, why do you have to go along <laughs> with it? It's it's survival of the fittest. It's like I don't know if you ever played Metal Gear Rising. That's the rules of nature. You gotta run when the sun comes up. With the light. okay, no, no, I'm not, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go into that whole spiel. <laughs> yeah. It's just survival of the fittest. <laughs> I'm just trying to stay alive, you know. That's 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 all it boils down to. Here, here's where I would disagree. Well, no, first I want to hear from Marlon. Marlon, what, what do you think? Do you agree with Triple Q on survival of the fittest and the only ways you have to conform? I'm not saying uh, Triple Q used the word conform, but that's kind of the vibe that I'm getting from there. Yeah. Uh, I kind of am, am more of like you got to kind of find your way. and Yeah, yeah. You know, you got to kind of do what's true to you to your heart and to your own intuition and yeah. sometimes you're going to have to step against what people may be telling you you know you should do or what is supposed to be the right way to do it i mean there's got to be you know i think a lot of times creatives and, and people and by creatives i mean people who were just thinking you know outside of what is considered a normal way those are the ones that usually make the way for people to move those are the ones yeah, that yeah. make the that will question and that will give other other ways and other solutions and other other roads and avenues for people to choose, which is how you know we move forward. Absolutely, absolutely. I think I think I kind of like I kind of put it the wrong way. It's I don't think I agree with like the thing of like conforming. It's more like adapting to the to society. Like mm. yeah, of course, Marlon's right. Yeah. Like the people who go against like the current, they're they're helping make the way. But at the same time, to to go against that current, you need to be aware Absolutely. of how of how it works so that you can adapt there to it go. and and push against it if if you need to. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There is something and I'm not saying this is bad, I'm saying this is what it is. There's something very Machiavellian about that, which I like. The idea <laughs> that you recognize what exact environment we're in and you do the right things, you know, play the right notes, so to speak. But at the same time, you do have a larger goal in mind of what you're trying to do. And I think the, the most successful leaders were like that. Napoleon, for example, when the French Revolution happened, Napoleon was all about the French Revolution. And then what happened when he got power? You know, bye bye French Revolution, you know, no more of that. <laughs> and he still he was still calling it revolutionary France, by the way. He was still using those same words, but right. the meaning changed because he ended up changing the meaning to suit his own, uh, you know, to his own, his own uh, goals here. But at the same time, I think 
what concerns me the most today is that we are living in a bit of a Procrucian bed. So for those who don't know that reference, is this uh, Greek legend about Procrucis, uh, probably mm -hmm. not saying the name correctly, who had this bed where if you were too tall, he'd cut you, he'd cut your legs off. And if you were too short, he'd stretch you so that you'd be able to fit on the it's bed. A bit of an overreaction. Yeah, you could say that. And I think, I think what's happening is a similar thing where people are expected to toe the line. People are expected to, oh, well, you, you know, like the self-censorship and all that that's going on right now. But the point is, is that there has to be a certain point where on a smaller individual level, I think that there is kind of a butterfly effect. Even if we're wrong, if we're able to speak freely and speak with each other, I'm not saying, you know, go on the podium, like break the rules and expose you know, everything at once. But at the same time, just like <laughs> ah. if we are able to speak with each other in private, in a group setting, without any ill intent, without any bad faith, and just say, like, this is what we this is what I believe right now. This is why I believe it. Let's see. Maybe I'm wrong. It's like that is not happening. And the reason why I think that's not happening is. I do think that to a certain extent, a lot of people, they're not even just scared, but I don't even think it occurs to them to do that. Right. I agree. I just think that they're so overwhelmed with information and, and I yeah. think the senses are just overloaded with in this, in this, in this modern society, like there's absolutely. so many things, information overload. It's absolutely, I, I agree with that. It's like, I was just having so a much conversation with someone today about that. It's like people are looking but they don't know the art of seeing. People are hearing, but we've forgotten about the art of truly like what it means to listen. People are reading, but the art of comprehending is yeah, gone because yeah. the information is being, it's, at, it's coming to us at such a rapid pace that we are so, like sometimes when I think when people, when we leave information from watching things and seeing things and hearing things and everything's being thrown at you at once, man, I just know for myself, like, just to come down from all of that energy in itself, like, takes a good hour. <laughs> yeah, so, hour. just give, like, give, me, give me an hour and I'll process it. I'll get yeah, back to you. <laughs> you know what I mean? You need to be like, what the, f you know, excuse my friends, what the fuck is yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. But like, like, whoa, whoa. And that takes a moment to get back. So that's just the three of us, like, talking here and really breaking it down. But like Absolutely. you said, Imagine if people don't have anybody to break it down to, mm -hmm. or they don't have, or they don't have the space to do that, or they don't know how to get that space. So you're holding all that information, sleeping on that information, waking up, pouring in more information, getting up and going to work with more information. What the hell is happening? I just need a body decompress. <laughs> <laughs> you just. Get yeah, well, they Just don't teach take a day off and unplug. Okay. Well, they don't <laughs> teach uh, meditation in school. Uh, they, I don't. I mean, there's probably some yoga classes, but I think music is a good way of decompressing, at least getting away from a lot of the yeah. noise and creating yeah. actual, creating That's actual cool. signal. I mean, yeah. I imagine that Marlon, like, if you and Triple Q, if you guys would have lived back in the old days, like back during the uh, you know hunter gatherer times, uh, I think you both would have been shamans to a certain probably. to a certain extent. You know. And you, either that or we've been playing drums. <laughs> yeah. yes. I think I'd be dead. When you see it now, it's like, Triple Q, come on, man. Let's just take the drum. You'd be like, nah, I'm just going to lay on the Just lay here right now. I just want to lay in the sand. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. Yeah, you'll be the first one eaten. But uh, it is interesting <laughs> to think about, like, a lot of these things that we do today, uh, whether it's video games, uh, even, even music, and let's say a non- a non-ceremonial sense, they could be described as surrogate activities, like an activity that's directed towards an artificial goal that people set up for themselves in order to fulfill, you know, in order to have some goal to work towards. So yeah. let's say if you satisfy your biological needs and the effort required to use your physical and mental faculties in like a varied and interesting way, would you feel seriously deprived if you didn't have these surrogate activities? Hmm. I mean, that's just like the, what is it called? Maslow's hierarchy of needs. If I'm not having fun, then I'd be fucked. I'm, no, but, no, but you're like, still having fun, but you'd be having fun in, let's say, a way that's related to 
upkeep of the shelter or providing like as a bard providing certain religious music so that the tribe is the, the tribe gets pumped up ready for battle you know like in the rpgs you know you have like, a bard <laughs> that does that spell and then like the well i guess i guess that depends on what you find fun really like some people like they enjoy building a house like i wouldn't enjoy building a house but i guess that's up to the person really mm. i mean if i wouldn't know because i've never done it but what i enjoy is different from everyone else so yeah that's but if what it boils down to and if that was something that you were deprived of let's say would you feel like uh you would be so deprived of it that there would be no reason to go on or do you think that the same quality that you have would be able to go into something like building a house or doing something that's still creative i'm not saying you have to be like a laborer that just yeah. you know just you know s smashes rocks all day but <laughs> yeah well uh i i mean i guess i <laughs> again i it's it's so hard for me to like imagine something like that like, well the reason why the reason why yeah. i bring it up is this is the other thing that a lot of people mm -hmm. i think do have these uh the surrogate activities that they do whether it's like the kind of job that they decided to do and obviously you know they need to make money and need to earn a living and all that but yeah. as far as like the goals that they set for themselves it is something that i'm not sure how many people today even like let's say video games for instance you play a game you reach a level you watch somebody else play a game there's a lot of there's a lot of humor that goes on on the inside as far as certain jokes that only the people within that circle know about and it does yeah. feel almost like these are all excuses just to have like a campfire community i don't know maybe i'm in the wrong mm -hmm. here but it almost feels like all this stuff is just like extra stuff all you really want is just to sit down next to a burning fire you know with other people around you and exchange stories and i don't know i that... mean that's that's a comfy that's a comfy feeling honestly like mm -hmm. it's cool to sit around the campfire tell a story with your friends i mean that that that's that's good i like that uh, that's a good analogy yeah and i agree i think it's uh very cool that people that we all get to do that like we're doing right now this is a this is like a fucking fireside <laughs> chat right now <laughs> yeah exactly yes but but it still but it still feels very I mean this I would definitely say break the rules. By the way, if you guys are liking this conversation, like the stream right now. The algorithm needs it. Like the stream yeah, right like, now. Like, comment, subscribe. Exactly. <laughs> Click the bell. The bell is extremely important as well. And be sure to subscribe and watch all the other content as well. Because I'll be honest, like doing a stream about Sonic the Hedgehog or I mean we're not even talking about Sonic the Hedgehog anymore, let's face it, we're just talking about life. But doing a stream <laughs> related to the subject is something very different from what break the rules usually does like before we were talking about the situation going on in ukraine and russia and uh, tomorrow we're going to be talking with one of the truckers from the uh the whole uh trucker protest that was going on i think it was recently uh uh recently um uh, dispersed but we're going to be talking with that guy about what does it mean to you know what does it actually mean as far as this canada a nation that looked was looked at as being so progressive and now we see how they react towards any you know towards any question of the uh, of the uh, you know of the government power it's almost like a canary in the coal mine like there's this illusion that oh we have all this freedom but then as soon as we step up and we start doing something and then we get arrested not only arrested but then like our whole movement gets tarnished as being like this racist bigoted thing by the corporate press and then the question is how much leverage do people have to be free when they mm -hmm. know that the government could just squash them like a bug whenever they attempt to do something Right. Well, uh, I live in Australia, so I haven't. I've heard about that on the news. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's yeah. I don't really know a whole lot about it. I just know all. Oh, but you're in the belly of the beast. I mean, you're in Australia. You've seen the kind of things that they're doing in Australia. I mean, I've only been seeing it as an outsider. But you're like, you were in like when it was all going down, right? What was going down? What was the all the lockdowns and all the oh know, the lockdown oh like it doesn't it doesn't really make a difference to me like uh for for all intents and purposes i'm kind of like a hermit i kind of stay mm. inside all 
freaking day. See, cause... that there it is. That's that's the trick. That's what I'm talking about. Like triple Q. I would excuse you being a hermit because you're so damn talented. That number one. Like you can be a hermit. I don't care. But huh. there are people out there who do not have the God-given musical skills of you or uh, uh, Marlon or you know uh, people like that who I think are still in the same boat of being like a neat, of being mm. somebody who just lives inside, just goes online, plays video games. And again, like the culture that you guys are able to create, I think it's a wonderful thing. You're making the best out of the situation at hand. But yeah. what do you think is going to happen afterwards if this whole thing keeps going on as far as this kind of isolation? It's like mm. uh, Nietzsche talked about, uh, Friedrich Nietzsche, he talked about the last man. He talked about the end result of having all of our creature comforts met as this human being that has every pleasure that is capable of being achieved right at their disposal, and that person has nothing to live for anymore. And it's all, it almost feels like the more we go inside of this uh, Dr. Eggman style robot, you know, how, how easy it is it going to be to get out? You know, like, is there anything like Marlon, like you're a generation younger than Triple Q, you are probably more offline than online. You know, you get to be around real people more. (laughs) So do you think that this is going in this very sad direction that I pointed out? Do you think there's a way out? Do you think that something inside people will trigger at a certain point? They'll be like, I'm not I'm not an animal. I'm a human being. I can't be stuck in this cage. I can't be stuck in the cybernetic cage. I will not eat the bugs. I will not live in the pot. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I mean, I really. Yeah. You know, the future's uncertain, honestly. It's like, really, really uncertain. And it's really like in a space of like, because I, you're right. Um, Generation yeah. X here. So you know, totally different in how we and how we look and, and think about things, and um, to see where we are. You know, there's so many things that are fascinating and that are incredible about where we are now. But you're right. When we go into this this pod, if you will, how many people are paying attention to whether or not there's an exit sign? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know what I mean. Some people have just adapted at this point. It's like it's it's a normal part of life. It's just it's changed this forever. And you know, there are many people that are just like, well, this is what it's got to be. And so, these conversations to me are great because they allow for change. They allow for change of mind, change of of how you perceive, how you think, how you listen, how you hear, how you feel, and. um, it just gives you opportunities to 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 be in different type of communities where people. I'm hoping that people can yeah. be like, oh wow, I know I you know this is something I've been thinking about. This is something that I've been questioning in my mind, and now I'm hearing them having a dialogue. So this could be a moment of hope for someone. You know, it's definitely a flip side. Like, even yeah. if we're inside, that gives us more of an opportunity to like connect with people. Like. Who yep. are like a billion miles away over the world, like like us right now? Yeah, absolutely, like, absolutely. This it's never like, would have happened before. That's uh, that's completely no, true. It's true. Thanks, technology. <laughs> yes, <laughs> technology. Look at this. Mm. So I want to shift the conversation a little bit, and I want to talk about your illustration, specifically of the avatar. So you have this girl with a knife on her throat. What is going? Who is this girl, by the way? What is going on with her? And what is the connection with her and the birthday girl from your latest? Uh, I love, by the way, that album that just came out. It's kind of like a m- mashup of various things you did in the past, and I think some um, new uh, new releases too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it's it's very new. It came out like just like a day after my birthday. So mm. yeah, I guess um. That's just my original character, really. Gosh, it feels it feels a bit awkward to be talking about like a, something like an OC on a podcast like this. But... Original character, do not steal. Yeah. My original character, don't steal. But yeah, that's <laughs> that's just something. That's just an avatar, really. Mm. And like, she, she reminds me a little bit of uh, Kill the Kill. There's a similar kind of vibe going on. Uh, st- uh, sort of. I, I like, don't know. Like it's this, like this part of the outfit, isn't that kind of like the? I don't know. Maybe I'm reading too much into it. It's. I guess I might have been subconsciously, uh, um, influenced by Kill a Kill or Triggers anime in general. But it's just like, 
it's just something I designed that I thought would look cool, basically. Mm. That's 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 all it boils down to, really. And and the whole neck thing with a knife, that's like inspired by Trevor Phillips from Grand Theft Auto Five. But mm. yeah. I could I could go on and on about like the Well what's with the like, cell phone? What is she looking at? She's looking at a message with a no sign on it. Oh no. Oh, okay, so on? the whole thing the whole thing but the whole backstory behind her is that she just like cancels people. Just because she gets a sick, <laughs> a sick pleasure out of it. She she doesn't do it out of any sense of righteousness, but yeah. Uh. But she cancels it. That's 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 the that's the that's gist. very very Dionysian of her. But uh, actually, speaking of cancellation, not so much cancellation, but more of uh, the copyright hurdles that you Triple Q had to go through. Oh yeah. yeah. So like Marlon, you are part of the musical industry in a way. You know, like you've uh, you've turned with Stevie Wonder, right? Yep. Yeah. There we go. Amazing. Oh, you've worked with a whole bunch of yeah. like people in the industry too. Yeah. 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 I'm reading a list right now, like Michael Jackson and Billy Joel. Yeah. Nine inch nails, Shania Twain. That's a that's a good, it's good uh, like uh, resume. Like how yeah, it's been good, man. <laughs> what's it like working with them? Like what's it like working in the industry like that? I love it. I mean, for me, it's just been everything that I basically dreamt that I would want to do. You get any? You get any big gigs these days? You know, or what? I still get big gigs. I still get oh, calls. That's good. Yeah, like now I do a lot of my calls now come in when someone needs to. Like I just did a thing with Michael Bublé for Christmas because mm. they needed a, they needed New York singers for that. I do a lot of ah. contracting of singers now. Sam That's Smith, cool. and Sam, you know, tours. They call me to to work to do his stuff. Yeah, the changes. I guess it. So so it's like um, I guess it's like with Sega. It's like, what was it like like recording with? Those guys. Did you ever meet like um any of the Sega sound team, like Jun Senue? Or I you know, know I that. may have, but one of the, I may have met them. Probably people came in from Sega when I was there, but I kind of would go in, sing the songs, say hello to people, and not in my mind be thinking about anything except like what the. Is producer... it like a group session, or did you ever? No, or is I it just of, oh you're in a booth and you're just doing. I kind of came into an amazing uh, studio that they had used to be here in New York. Oh, and they would okay. just bring me in and I would, you know, come in and work with the producer and he'd be like, you know, we this is kind of what we thinking about the character and explain a little bit. And then they just let me kind of begin to kind of create it vocally, you know what I mean? And I'd hear some of the track and figure it out and be like, oh, can I put a part on here? This is what I hear in the harmony. Oh, did you get to like improvise a little, like do a little fucking solo or whatever? Yeah, you know, then they would be like, okay, take a, you know, take a track oh, and just yeah, run yeah, through cool. and do what you and then they would kind of put it together at the end according to what they needed to be done that makes sense yeah, yeah you know yeah. what i mean and what was the experience with uh, nights in the dreams now that was a call that they called me and said we need you to do the to do the arrangement um and to call the singers in you know get the singers to sing with you and put it together and that was hard you know <laughs> oh yeah how because many had... how many people were doing the acapella there one, two, five, five of us. Wow. And so I had to write it. And then I had to, um, you know, find the, the, get the right blend for the <laughs> singers that I wanted. And, you know, sing. And each of us had to step out and sing leads. And then the hardest, and then I had to sing the bass part on it as well as in singing the tenor part. So it was a lot. I remember that. And the original song, Dreams, Dreams, was that already, that was already at the can as it was? Or exactly. They were like, here's a song. You have to make an arrangement. Mm. We, and we need it to be this way, and we want it to have this feel, and we want it to have that. that feel. When, when right, you right, sang, yeah. and I think this was you, I think, when you sang, in the dream we can do everything we want to, when you sang that first part, in the dream we can do, just like that was so soulful, just the way that you were able to. I mean, it's just, it's incredible. I mean, well, I don't, I don't even have anything to say there other than just listening to that song after I beat Nights in the Dreams. <clears throat> Which was an incredible, like one of the most beautiful video games I've ever seen. Like that, that little part with the angel, you know, yep. just sleeping there next to the candle. There was something so amazing about that. That's why, like, for the people who say that video games are art, you know, like f you. It's absolutely, especially during that time. It's fascinating that dreams. I remember that when they when they showed it to me at the end. Like, it was like, oh wow, this is what's happening. Did you play the game? No. 
We got to oh, change that. You're not very much of a gamer, yeah, I imagine. <laughs> we got to no. change that. But, yeah. you know, it's so interesting because over the past five years, it's my whole sense of it has changed because I've been in touch with so many people who now are like, oh, Marlon, da, 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 da. they're finding me online and everything. So it's changed my whole concept of what this is. And, and you know, because you're running in the city and you're, you're of course, you're connected with Sega now. You're part of it. But so mm. you're going in when they call you. Yeah. But that, your mind is thinking, okay, I've just done the Sega game. Now I'm running off because I got to go do this Coke commercial. So my mind was in, a, you know, I'm in a different place. Yeah. And it's, it, it, it might have been like, it's it's a gig now, but it's a cultural phenomenon like exactly later. Exactly. Yeah, like, I couldn't have said it better myself because, yeah. I, you know, at the time you're running, you're thinking, yes, I want this to be. Of course, you're like, I'm excited about this. It's on this. But you have no idea of what's going to happen when you have time. Time makes that happen. And are you still associated yeah. with Sega? Like, would Sega ever call you for any uh, gigs? You know what's so funny? I just got a call from the producer who produced those two things and said to me, we now need you to come in and help us put together. We need a new roster of some singers to begin to consider. And would you be willing to do that with us? And I said, ah, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, we'll keep you in mind. That's, <laughs> that's usually a fucking kiss of death when it comes to like, oh, from, from my thing anyway, but mm. that, that seems like mean? a good what connection you for you. But, but for me, when I said, oh, we'll keep it. In- for me, it's like, oh, we'll keep you in touch. And that's a, like, ah. not consider you anymore. <laughs> no, no, no. For us, it's a, well, for me, because that's good. I have, yeah. I have relations. So what they're, what, what they're basically saying is we need a new roster of singers and we need yeah. you, to, we need you to contract those singers. So can we count on you to do that? Mm. I, I almost feel like the question I'm about to ask right now, you probably shouldn't even answer because I don't want anything to get in the way of you and Sega. But have you just feel free to ignore this? Have you seen any like Yakuza activity around Sega? <laughs> have I seen what? Yakuza, like the Japanese mafia. No. I okay, 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 okay. Okay. <laughs> fair okay. enough. Fair okay, enough. just so you know where that's coming from, by the way, just for history. And again, this is just like a video that I watched, so take it with a grain of salt. But the idea was that Sega was originally a gambling company. You know, it was originally this uh, oh, an American company, actually, that created these uh, these gambling machines, and then they exported those machines to Japan. And from mm. there, you know, Jap- Japanese society and gambling, that's the property of the Yakuza. So... You know, I'm not. I'm gonna say no more. I don't want anything bad to happen. But, uh, but yeah, no. But I still like Sega more than uh, Nintendo. You know, Sega does what Nintendo don't. But uh, nah. when it comes to the kids today who are going to uh, NYU and before that uh, to the other university, did they did they know about your you know vocals and Sonic Adventure? Did they grow up with that? Do students still a come lot up of to you say a lot of them had and. Or they would have discovered something else. Like they would have discovered Enchanted or they would have discovered something else. Oh, yeah, else you were on Enchanted too. And so, and you could always tell, I could always tell when I would walk into the room and something had been discovered because the class would be very like, do I know that guy? Like, <laughs> exactly. They'd be like, yeah. really? Really? Why didn't you tell? And I would just be like, what's going on? And then they'd just be like, you know, we did this and we found out this and... What about this? And I was like, this is not your class. That's not what this class is about. Just get to the you. lesson at hand. <laughs> you can, you can fanboy out later. Yeah, yeah, you know, let's, let's get to work. Yeah, book me for a live stream, and then, we'll, then we can fan out as much <laughs> as possible. <laughs> wow. But yeah. Wow, this, this has been great. Uh, Marlon, it was Absolutely. a great, it was a great pleasure and great honor to talk to you. And same with you, Triple Q. I mean, I Absolutely. guess to uh, uh, to uh, leave, I think, on a high note, the kind of the kind of things that we were exposed to, I think, growing up, and especially, I'd say, pre. I'm not even going to say the date for the algorithmic reasons, but you know that event that happened on a certain September, you know, mm. in a certain year. Mm. It almost seems like. Nights in the dreams for me, and Christmas nights as well. Christmas tri- uh, nights, as well. Uh, uh, you know, that was a uh, oh man, that was amazing. But games of that nature, I think they did something to our minds where we were exposed to a certain degree of beauty. 
whether it's through the music, because Sega was always on top of it when it comes to the musical tracks, but also just in terms of, uh, you know, in terms of the visuals, in terms of the monsters. Like, one thing that I really appreciate, especially, like, with a lot of Japanese art, other than, you know, like those, you know, the pretty big boob, big-eyed girls, but also when it comes to the, um, when it comes to, like, the Onis, these various Japanese monsters and demons, like Pokemon, for example, that there mm. is a burst of creativity that occurs there, and I think the people that are exposed to that end up passing that on and creating their own things with that, like Miyazaki movies, things of that nature. But also, it's this very kind of like late 90s mood pre that particular yeah. day that I think was emphasized in, like the song Dreams, Dreams, same thing with your yeah. acapella, just that kind of mood. It's almost like we could have gone in a dif different direction. Things could have been different. It almost mm -hmm. feels like we're living in a bad timeline, but we still have that sense of the good timeline being possible to go back into, if you know what I mean, from the inspiration that we got from this content. Wow. wow. So wow. It might be a bad timeline, but, you know, we got to make the most of it. Absolutely. From, the, from that possible good timeline that you're talking about. Yeah. Yes. Amazing. Yeah. So we are going to end this. There are some super chats that I wanted to get into. And I think we have one super chat that was in the very beginning. I'm going to read it right now. Let me just scroll up here. And it is from a uh, no name, $2, who says Sneed. Thank you very much, no name. And also, I want to announce to all the good people who are watching this, there is going to be a stream tomorrow. And this stream is going to have here. Let me just load it up over here. This stream, yeah, and I know we're not seeing anything right now on the camera. I'm going to change that. So this stream is going to be, like I said before, about the Canadian truckers. And it is something to look at because this is a person who was involved in the whole operation as far as going there, being a part of it. And mm. now, like, you don't even know, like, is his livelihood going to still, you know, exist? Is this somebody who's going to be persecuted for what a... Uh, for what he did, you know, for taking part in this whole thing. We're going to be seeing it in real time, what exactly happens. And all I can wish is that, just like in here, people can gather, speak speak with other people that may disagree with them, and start to grow something very powerful from that. And that is the only thing that I could hope for. So once again, it's an incredible honor to have the two maestros Triple Q yeah. and Marlon Saunders on the Break the Rules stream. And listen, for all the Sonic fans who are watching this right now, for all the Triple Q aficionados, this may be different from what you're used to seeing. I implore you, check Break the Rules out. Check the conversations that we have here every Tuesday and Thursday, and I guarantee you will not be disappointed. We want to raise everybody up. We want to challenge everybody to make the very best uh, out of uh, themselves as possible and that's it. That's all I got to say. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, oh, and final plugs. Marlon, where could they find your, your beautiful work? There's MarlonSaunders.com. And uh, where, where else? Where could people go? You know, they can go to Apple Music, Spotify Music, any of the music sites, certainly. And they can find me on Insta, Instagram, chatting it up and doing things there, too. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. And uh, MarlonSaunders.com. And Triple Q, I mean, this may be a dumb question because everybody already knows how to find you. But if not, where do people awesome. find the great Triple Q? Oh, you can find me at uh, Triple Q at Twitter because somebody took Triple Q because they're <laughs> cyber squatter. It's, it's Triple K-Y-U-N on Twitter. And that's the same on YouTube. I'm also on Newgrounds at Triple uh dash q newgrounds.com and and from there you can find a whole bunch of other links that's my plug excellent Don't, yeah and speaking of newgrounds we are going to have an animation stream later on with uh, uh hans van harken who's Ooh. one of, who i think is like the head writer for uh, smiling friends so he's going to be there, and uh, we're going to be talking about independent animation and how it may be rising back up again. You know, like there was that part with animation when it was getting its high, like in two thousand, like the early 2010s, and now it's sort of, you know, algorithms and all that. But we'll, we'll see. We'll see what will happen. So thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate everybody here. Take care. Mwah. Good night, everybody. See you.
No Name says this episode was Kino. I agree. And also Oscar Toe says, thanks, Levin Marlin, Triple Q. All hail King Arthur forever and ever. <laughs> hit, hit it out of the park with this one, Lev. 